Oh, wow. Oh, what power. It's flowing all oh, the currents of healing are just going on me. Oh, wow. I just went over there and prayed. Oh, for a great anointing to give this lesson and it just hit me like a lightning bolt. A power of healing and he's just saying the healing is getting ready to flow even greater than before and that anointing just went all over me. Woo! <laughs> oh boy, I started praising God so fast I could, couldn't hardly stop to come over here and start. Oh, I just kept going and going up in that Heavenly language, praying in God and praising God and thanking Him for all that mighty waves of power that's flowing and all that healing and the ways working and the mighty miracles He's coming, He's doing and the mighty magnificent way He is working. Whoa! Yes, I, I just pray that you're understanding this, that you're getting all this. Whoa! 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 You'll be so glad. Oh, when this all starts blowing, woo! And you'll be saying it. You'll be saying woo woo. Okay, so we are studying Colossians as good as all this is. We're going to study Colossians, and in Colossians is marvelous. Oh my goodness, that's why I'm feeling all this as I've been studying this Colossians. And Paul, oh, I mean, Paul just pours out the bucket on the Stone King Colossians. I mean, tell us how. Uh, but, you know, about the, how we are risen with Christ and all that and how far Christ is up there and all of these marvelous things about Christ. He keeps repeating it, keeps telling us, he keeps telling us, oh, he keeps telling us again how powerful it all is until it, you just overflow if you really understand it and really get what, he, what he's saying, and, you know. And uh, I read this uh, over and over before. It's one of my favorite books. I read it all through uh, many times. But boy, I, you know, I didn't get it like I'm getting it this time because I had the anointing before I was reading it this time. You know, and all, having all that heating flowing and that anointing flowing and everything like that before I even started reading it. You know, that caused me, me, me to be to get a lot, get it a whole lot faster and a whole lot deeper and a whole lot more powerfully. And I started understanding what. What, you know, me trying to explain myself about the healing power, I started understanding what St. Paul was going through trying to explain it. Why we know the healing power is so strong and so marvelous and so powerful, and Christ is so marvelous and so strong and so powerful, and he was risen from the dead and all this. And I'm trying to explain that, and oh, yes, you start to understand all of it. And yes, so here we go. Uh, we, this is, uh, we're going to study it. <laughs> we really are. Okay, so it is 6 p.m. Central Standard Time in the USA. And I hope you heard my earlier programs at uh, 2.30 and 3.30 and <laughs> whatever those other times, uh, any time uh, the Spirit moves. Uh, okay, so I hope you go back and review those, especially at 2.30, 3.30. And so we're going to continue here. And we had left off at verse 4 about that, you know, uh, uh, Christ who is your life. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, that's a, that's a, a memory verse of one of my favorite verses. Christ who is our life it shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. And so I'm going to go, and we're going to start with that. That's where we we left off last time. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Whoa! <laughs> oh, wow. You know, I mean, that's kind of like his healing power. When his healing power starts, starts appearing and starts flowing, Oh my, what glory it is. And you start saying, well, how in the world did I deny that before? And that's going to be the way it is with Christ. When you really start understanding what all you have in Christ and how high and lifted up he is and everything. Oh man, it's just going to be so glorious. You're not, you're not going to believe it. You know, and, and uh, oh my, woo, and we, and we, we were risen together with him and, and uh, he said he so loved us that, He's going to let us share 
uh, in all of this inheritance. And oh, it said, uh, uh, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God, the sons of God, and the daughters of God. Woo! My. And so, we're going to go on here. I mean, that's so glorious. You just have to, oh, you need to camp on that verse. Oh, wow. Woo! Memorize that verse, and we'll go on to number five. Uh, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon earth, the earthly fornication, uncleanness, uh, in ordinate affection, and evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry for which things. Sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And you see, all those things, the reason why it comes upon the children of this be, uh, that do those things uh, is because that robs you, you know, of all your, you know, ability to uh, understand, you know, all these marvelous things. It, it robs you of your ability to communicate with God, to have communion with God. And God loves uh, the people that he created and he wants us to be, uh, be one with Christ and understand these things. He wants us to be resurrected with Christ and share in all the glory and all that and see all these kinds of things that he's talking about there. Uh, that our members get involved in our physical members, that we're supposed to be subordinating to our spiritual soul. You know, we let that physical soul uh, uh, th that has all those uh, various different things, uh, har hormonal imbalances and hormonal problems and every other kind of thing going on and, and jostling around in every kind of way and creating all kind of problems. And, and we let all of those uh, uh, fleshly inclinations get ahead of what our spiritual soul is actually supposed to be here for and what it's supposed to be actually enjoying. And so, you know, you can't enjoy it all at, both at the, at, at the same same time when you've got that type of uh, that, uh, that fleshly uh, pleasures and fleshly desires and fleshly imbalances and all that getting in the way between you and God. You can, then you can't enjoy the presence of God. And so then you totally miss the healing power. I mean, you just, you totally, you know, you just take, totally can't even understand that. You don't understand the joy of the Lord and why people get in, get happy with the Lord and dance in the spirit and all that. You just totally miss, you know, you just totally miss it. And I've had people, you know, just, you know, people walk through, see people praising God and people being healed and everything else, and they just just totally miss it. You know, so, I didn't see, I didn't see anything. You know, and that's the way it is. If you're you're all caught up in the in these things that he's talking about there, you know, uh, uh, covetousness and uh, uncleanliness and fornication and all that, all of that just takes up your whole mind, fills your whole mind, and fills your whole thoughts till so you can't see anything else. You know, and so it's it's kind of a bad thing when you just have your mind so full of, of the, the, the things of this world and the things of this life and on this earth and also you can't see anything else beyond uh, what, you know, just right there in front of you. And so let's go on. Let's move on. Um, and uh, verse 6 says, yeah, God, the wrath of God, for which things that uh, sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience in the, in the which ye also walked some time when you lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You know, uh, all of those things like that, you know, I mean, if you want to just keep all of that in front of you, you know, and, and blind you from seeing these great joys of the Lord, uh, uh, then uh, the wrath of God, you know, is, you know, it's not like he's going to strike you with lightning or anything like that, but uh, uh, the wrath of God just means that you become blinded and as an enemy in, of a, in a sense of God, you become blinded to the real joys of life. You become blinded, as I say, to the healing power and the ability to get healing for yourself or healing for your loved ones or healing for other people. And so, as a result, those things are getting in your way and they're creating a problem for you and they're messing up your life. And so he said, well, why don't you just 
get rid, just put off those things a while and see how, how happy you can be without, you know, going around cussing and swearing and, and uh, committing all kinds of uh, uh, sins. Uh, and, and just see how uh, your life would be and may, how maybe it would be uh, something that you would learn to appreciate. So let's see. Let's go on here and... But it says that lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. And boy, I'll tell you what, we've got all kinds of deceit and corruption going on today. I mean, just you have no honesty, no uh, integrity or anything going on in seemingly in the world today. And so, so what happens? You know, I heard somebody talking about that. About a while ago, you know, uh, where uh, they're trying to trying to see uh, uh, see get to the bottom. You say, why can't they get to the bottom of what's going on? And see, it's because there is so much lying on every side, and so much deceit, and so much corruption, and everybody trying to cover themselves and cover the people around them and and, and keep them all, all, all keep themselves out of uh, being discovered for all their lies and their deceit and it's gotten to be such a mighty web that they have woven till they know not what their left hand the, the difference between what their left hand and their right hand and uh, uh, no they don't know their left hand from the right hand and they don't, they don't know what's honest and what's not anymore and so they can't get to the bottom of anything because they're too caught up in their own lies and deceits and their own corruption in their own sea ways and so they cannot even get to the bottom of anything because everything mixes them up because it's all just more and more deceit and you'd have to uncover all of that in order to get to the bottom of anything and so that just shows you what you get into because of that and that's why it says lie not to one another just don't start that practice and if everybody uh, d nobody starts the lying nobody gets into the lie, then everybody knows exactly what is going on. And when they need to get to the bottom of something, they can get to it real quick because everybody's going to tell the truth. And so everybody's going to know. And then if one person gets out of, out of line and commits some some corrupt thing, uh, then all of a sudden they, they, it just comes to light real quick because nobody else is lying. You know, nobody else is corrupt. And so that keeps everything clean. That keeps everything transparent. And so we need to get back to that time when we uh, keep ourselves free of lying. And that's that's what he's talking about. He sees what's going to going to happen with people if they don't stop uh, lying one to another. And it's not just something that doesn't amount to anything, but it's really a, a serious thing. And you put off the old man and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You know, see, uh, we are being renewed after the image of God and after the image of Jesus. Oh, God, God created that image to come to this earth and demonstrate it the right way to live, the honest way to live, the way of to, how to live in integrity and how to heal people and how to lift people up and how to love people, how to love in the right way, uh, how to care for people in the right way. He showed the image of exactly how well things would work if we love one another and loved our neighbor as ourselves and put that image before us. And so we need to renew ourselves after that same image and then we will solve a multitude of problems. And so I'm going to pray right now that everyone listening to this will be raised above that old man with his old deeds and all his with his deeds. And they'll be raised up to a high mountain of joy way above all the things of this earth where they can see the mighty works of God, understand the mighty healing of God. And I just pray right now that everyone will be healed of 
every last root of cancer be completely and in total remission permanently and everyone will be healed of all lung disease, all kidney disease, all diabetes, all, all uh, 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 liver disease, uh, all bone disease, all leukemia, all just heal people of every type of uh, uh, joint disease, every arthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and everything. Thing. Dear God will be strong, all their joints will be strong, all their bones will be strong, and dear God, you just let them reach up and receive all the healing power now and be relieved of all lupus and all osteoporosis and how strong body we pray right now that you would lift everybody out of all addiction to drugs and all addiction to cigarettes and caffeine and all addiction to the opioids, all their addiction to all of the uh, cocaine or heroin or whatever they're hooked on. And we ask you to just raise them up to a high mountain of joy now and put them on their feet on the high ground. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.